we tend to erroneously believe that when something happens, we record that in the brain. It's written down in the brain as a memory, the way that a computer might hold a little file. And then every time we retrieve that memory, every time we pull that back up, we are viewing that little movie again. So it comes as a surprise that real human memory in the brain is nothing like a movie, but much more like the operator game, wherein the message becomes increasingly distorted. For example, let's say I show you a picture of something that you're not super familiar with, like an old Polynesian war mask with a sort of strange shape and some different lines and circles on it. And then I ask you to draw it later. Your drawing will probably drift from what you actually saw. And the next time after that, when I ask you to draw it again, your memory will presumably be influenced by what you drew the last time. And if I ask you to do this over and over again, let's say once a month, there will be something of a steady progression from drawing one to drawing 10 because you are playing the operator game with yourself. Each time you retrieve the memory, it is influenced by what you thought it was last time. So to dig into this, we're going to start today's episode with a short story. This is a Native American folk story called The War of the Ghosts, and it's read here by actor Sean Judge. War of the Ghosts One night, two young men from Egulac went down to the river to hunt seals, and while they were there, it became foggy and calm. Then they heard war cries, and they thought, maybe this is a war party. They escaped to the shore and hid behind a log. Now canoes came up, and they heard the noise of paddles and saw one canoe coming up to them. There were five men in the canoe, and they said, What do you think? We wish to take you along. We are going up the river to make war on the people. One of the young men said, I have no arrows. Arrows are in the canoe, they said. I will not go along. I might be killed. My relatives do not know where I have gone. But you, he said, turning to the other, may go with them. So one of the young men went, but the other returned home. And the warriors went on up the river to a town on the other side of Kalama. The people came down to the water and they began to fight, and many were killed. But presently the young man heard one of the warriors say, Quick, let us go home. That Indian has been hit. Now he thought, Oh, they are ghosts. He did not feel sick, but they said he had been shot. So the canoes went back to Egulac, and the young man went ashore to his house and made a fire. And he told everybody and said, Behold, I accompanied the ghosts, and we went to fight. Many of our fellows were killed, and many of those who attacked us were killed. They said I was hit, but I did not feel sick. He told it all, and then he became quiet. When the sun rose, he fell down. Something black came out of his mouth. His face became contorted. The people jumped up and cried. He was dead. This probably seems to you like a bit of a weird story. It seems like it's not particularly well told or clear. So given the strangeness of the story, why did it become quite famous in the psychology community almost a century ago, in 1932? It's because of a researcher named Frederick Bartlett, who was a psychologist at Cambridge University. He chose this story, The War of the Ghosts, to examine the way that our memories change with time. Now, he chose this particular folktale because he wanted something that wasn't crystal clear, so that it might be slightly more susceptible to changes in the retelling. That way, he could examine the way in which it changed in the retelling, and the retelling after that and so on into the future. In other words, he used this story to see if he could really shine a light on the constructive character of memory. In other words, the way that recalling a memory is something like reconstructing what happened. Your brain rebuilding its best guess at a memory rather than the way a computer simply retrieves a file of zeros and ones without loss. So in Bartlett's study, he had participants read The War of the Ghosts. Then they were instructed to recall and write down the story as perfectly as they could. 
Now, it's only been about a minute since you heard the story. Think about how you would retell it now, what details you would remember from that story. Not surprisingly, Bartlett found that the story drifted from the original upon the retelling. Here, for example, is a person who was asked to remember and reproduce the story, and he did this multiple times. Here he is on his 10th reproduction. War of the Ghosts Two Indians were out fishing for seals in the Bay of Manpapan, when along came five other Indians in a war canoe. They were going fighting. Come with us, said five of the two, and fight. I cannot come, was the answer of the one, for I have an old mother at home who is dependent on me. The other also said he could not come because he had no arms. That is no difficulty, the others replied, for we have plenty in the canoe with us. So he got into the canoe and went with them. In a fight soon afterwards, this Indian received a mortal wound. Finding that his hour was come, he cried out that he was about to die. Nonsense, said one of the others. You will not die. But he did. Now, Bartlett also had other participants read the story and then reproduce it at intervals very far apart, in some cases over years. So here's another participant. This is Subject P on his first reproduction. War of the Ghosts Two youths were standing by a river about to start seal catching when a boat appeared with five men in it. They were all armed for war. The youths were at first frightened, but they were asked by the men to come and help them fight some enemies on the other bank. One youth said that he could not come as his relations would be anxious about him. The other said he would go and entered the boat. In the evening, he returned to his hut and told his friends that he had been in a battle. A great many had been slain, and he had been wounded by an arrow. He had not felt any pain, he said. They told him that he must have been fighting a battle of ghosts. Then he remembered that it had been queer, and he was very excited. In the morning, however, he became ill, and his friends gathered round. He fell down, and his face became very pale. Then he writhed and shrieked, and his friends were filled with terror. At last he became calm. Something hard and black came out of his mouth, and he lay contorted and dead. And here he is again when he's asked to reproduce the story after 30 months. War of the Ghosts Some warriors went to wage war against the ghosts. They fought all day, and one of their number was wounded. They returned home in the evening, bearing their sick comrade. As the day drew to a close, he became rapidly worse, and the villagers came round him. At sunset, he sighed. Something black came out of his mouth. He was dead. So what he generally found is that the story became shorter with each reproduction. But here was the key. He realized that this was more than just the telephone game, where a signal just becomes noisier each time it's repeated. Instead, with the War of the Ghosts, he found there was a pattern to the way the story changed. First of all, it typically became more coherent to the speaker. As Bartlett wrote, quote, No trace of an odd or supernatural element is left. We have a perfectly straightforward story of a fight and a death, end quote. So Bartlett studied the character of the changes, and he found that these happen by transforming details into things that are more familiar and conventional to the person doing the remembering. Sometimes the order of events would change and things would commonly get omitted, like the ghosts getting sliced out of the story pretty early on, or the wound becoming a matter of flesh, not spirit. All in all, he was interested in the way that people, through time, made the parts grow more coherent for themselves. In other words, the distortions were driven by a person's schema. Now, what does that mean? It means that people morphed the story to make it consistent with what's going on in their heads. In other words, the changes you make to the story are navigated by your internal model. <laughs> 